In this video, we'll see the theory of servlets. So in the last two examples, we have seen what is servlet, how to create a servlet, and then we have seen uh, do get and do post method. In this, we'll discuss about some theoretical aspect of servlets. Now, if we talk about servlet, you know, it, it works with a, a model called as request and response. See, basically, if you talk about servlet, they are server component, right? So we, what we have is we have a client and we have a server. So this is your client here on the left side and we have a server on this side. Now if you want any resource from a server, maybe a HTML page, maybe some image, a video or something else, maybe a game. So you have to send a request first. Now this, this request will be of type HTTP, right? Because we, you want a page, right? A page which will have multiple links. So you have to use HTTP request. This request will go to server. Now this server, maybe if it is a static page or dynamic page depend upon your request it will return the page okay and the page type will be html now uh, if you talk about static dynamics so i have a, a, a different video on that if you, if you can you can just go to my uh, playlist if you will find a video called as uh, static versus dynamic page web pages uh, there you will know uh, different types of pages so basically when you, if you're working with static or dynamic you have to send a request so that you will get a request or response so this type of model is called as request and response model. So if you talk about a request, it's a, it, it's, uh, it's a type of request which is HTTP and you have to specify something called as URL because whenever you send a request to a page, you should know the URL of the page which is Uniform Resource Locator and then uh, maybe you, you have to send some parameters. Maybe if let's say you want to log in and when you talk about login, you have to pass username and password, right? So you have to, you have to pass some parameters. Now, once you send a request, what you need is you'll be getting some response. Now, this response will be with a status code. Now, what is status code? It's like uh, if your request is accepted and it is getting processed, so the request code will be uh, the status code will be two hundred. If you're if you're if you're accessing a page which is not available or it is not found, it will return four not four. Of course, everyone knows about four not four, right? So that's your status code. Now, when you send some response, you know, your response can be of different type. It can be a HTML page, it can be a text or a picture. So that, that you have to mention here, which is a content type and then the actual content. Maybe uh, if you are selecting here text, so it will be a text image, right? Next, so when you look, let's talk about servlet now. So now we know we have a request model. If we have to send a request, we will getting the response. Now, if you talk about a dynamic web page, to create those pages, what we need is a servlet, right? Now, where to run your servlets? So, on your server, there will be you will be having a special JVM, and that special JVM will be called as web container. Now, you will get this web container from Apache Tomcat, or you can use Glassfish, uh, and there are lots of different containers you can use. And all these container, they are part of web server, right? So like if you talk about Apache, Tomcat, it's a web server. If you talk about uh, Glassfish, it's a combination of web server and app server. Uh, but basically, all the app server, <coughs> they have a web server inbuilt. So when you send a request there, so you have to send a request. The request will go to web server. Now, this web server, depending upon which type of request you are sending or the uh, name of the servlet, it will go to web container. Now this web container is responsibility to call a particular servlet, right? Because ultimately the page you have to generate will be generated by the servlet. So initially you have to send a request to web server. This web server will have a web container and web container will have servlet. Now, uh, so in detail how it works. So you have to send a request to web server. Web server will send a request to web container. Now your request goes to, there's some, there's some error here. This is request. So your request goes to a thread. So every servlet will, every time you send a request to a servlet, instead of running only one servlet, it will create a thread so that the same servlet can be accessed by multiple people. You know, let's say if you talk about Facebook, just imagine, you know, for time being, basically Facebook is created in PHP, right? But let's say in scenario, let's say Facebook is created in Java, maybe servlets. So in, that, in this scenario, let's say you want to access your friend list or if you want to access messages. So messages will be one servlet, right? And if you want to access your message, it will create a different thread. At the same time, some other piece, some other person, he want to access his own messages. So it will create a different thread, right? So multiple people will be having multiple threads. So one, th one person, one thread. 
multiple people that will be multiple threads and every time you want to execute your thread you have to call a method called as service which indirectly will call do get now if your request is get type it will call do get if your request is post type it will it will call do post as we have seen in the last video and then you will get a response page which is this HTML page and that will be sent to the client cool so these are your web container works now if you talk about the uh, the, 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 the role of web container so basically it, it, it does these five operations first it provides your communication support which which means multiple servlets can communicate with each other with the help of web container it also manages your life cycle which means let's say if you want to create a servlet so you have to first go first first you have to go for the init method then we have to go for service method then we have to go for destroy method so creation of your servlet and destroy of your servlet will be done by your web container. Next, who is responsible to create multiple threads if you get multiple requests? It's again web container. Who provides security? Now servlets is known, you know, they are largely used because of their security features. And who provides the security? Again, it's a web container. And then we have, it also supports JSP. Now what exactly JSP is, that we'll discuss later in, this, in the further tutorial. Now let's say you got a request, okay, so you, you have a web container in this, you have, in this web container you have, let's say, 10 servlets. And now you get a request from a client, you want to, you want some resource. Like example, in this we have a servlet name, servlet class called as login. And a user sends a request called as logon, you know, that's a printing mistake again, you know, I'm very bad with typing. So let's say we have a, we have a URL which request says logon. Now what I want, I want to link this logon with login. So this is how we have to we have to do right again. How to work with this? That we'll see in the practical uh, when we when we start with the coding. Uh, but basically, you have to type this two two tags here. Okay. So in order to maintain, in order to mention which servlet to run and to mention your container that what are the servlets we have, you have to use a file called as web.xml, and this file is also called as deployment descriptor. Now, if we talk about the life cycle, by default, every servlet will be in this state, which is done, does not exist. As soon as you call a servlet, it will go for any state and it will initialize. Now, as soon as your server get into this container, it will provide you service. And once your service is complete, it will get destroyed. Cool. Now, let's say you want to create your own servlet. So, in order to create your own servlet, first step is you have to create a servlet. Okay. And then, in order to create a servlet, what we need is you, you require a, a class called HTTP servlet. So you have to extend your class to HTTP servlet, which in turn, which in turn extends generic servlet, and this generic servlet implements servlet interface. Okay, so all the features of servlet you get is from this servlet interface. Cool. So now you are all set. You know, this is this is the basic theory of servlets. The, my my intention was not to you know overwhelm you with all these concepts because we'll be using all these concepts in the in the you know subsequent tutorials. So at that point, I will refer to this certain slides. You know, I have we talked about this slide, we talked about this slide. So don't be so stressed. We'll be talking about this in the further tutorials. So basically, remember you have to remember this thing. You have to create a servlet, which is your servlet, which will extend a HTTP servlet. Cool, and you get all the features from servlet interface here so that is from the theory now and we'll talk about the more, more practical implementation in the next part of the tutorial so thanks for watching and do subscribe for other videos